What? So this article was written by Nick Estes. He is an uh, indigenous organizer, journalist and historian and road member of this tribe. So I guess an indigenous person. Anyways, he writes about basically indigenous people. And he's written this article called Bill Gates is the biggest private owner of farmland in the United States. Why? Well, I was doing research for a video about Bill Gates, essentially like <laughs> on the same topic, but I couldn't make up nothing like spectacular. So I abandoned the idea and then I came over this article and yeah, it's so interesting that I've decided to shoot a video just reacting to this piece of literature. It says, Gates has been buying land like it's going out of style. He now owns more farmland than my entire Native American nation. Land is power, land is wealth, and more importantly, land is about race and class. The relationship to land, who owns it, who works it, and who cares for it, reflects obscene levels of inequality and legacies of colonialism and white sup... Um... Sure. Bill Gates has never been a farmer, so why did the land report dub him Farmer Bill this year? Uh, some stuff. Nor does he put in the backbreaking labor humble people do to grow our food and who get far less praise for it. Well, uh, let's just read the article first and then address the points one after another. That kind of hard work isn't what made him rich. Gates' achievement, according to the report, is that he's largest private owner of farmland in the US. Yeah, he owns something around these 242,000 acres of farmland through trusts or shell companies. And the author puts that in perspective with his lower brule size tribe. And he says that it's essentially twice the acreage of, the, of his tribe where he's an enrolled member and he continues with a white man of small farmland than my entire native nation. The United States is defined by the excess of its ruling class, but why do a handful of people own so much land? <laughs> Interesting stuff here. Interesting stuff here. Here the sentence wealth accumulation always goes hand in hand with exploitation and dispossession. Here he talks about slavery that was happening in the US. Then he goes on about Ted Turner who is a billionaire media mogul. He has the largest privately owned buffalo herd. Those animals which are sacred to my people and were nearly hunted to extinction by settlers are preserved today on nearly 200,000 acres of Turner's ranch land within the boundaries of the 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty territory in the western half South Dakota, a land that was once guaranteed by the US government to be a permanent home for Lakota people. Um, here I don't really know if he is like happy about it that Turner is preserving those animals on his ranch land or if he is disappointed with Turner owning ranch land in the land that was once guaranteed by the US government to be a permanent home for Lakota people. So I don't really know if the author is like happy or sad about it. Here he goes on about the gun and whip. But billionaire class assertions that they are philosopher kings and climate conscious investors who know better than the original caretakers are little more than just ruses for what amounts to a 21st century land grab with big payouts for in a for-profit economy seeking green solutions. Our era is dominated by the ultra-rich, the climate crisis and burgeoning green capitalism. And Bill Gates' new book, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster, positions himself as a thought leader in how to stop putting greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and how to fund what he has called elsewhere a global green revolution to help poor farmers mitigate climate change. This one is interesting. The world's richest 1% emit double the carbon of the poorest 50%. Yeah, so basically there is a lot of stuff in this article and now we are gonna address this sh So to address the first thing, Gates has been buying land like it's going out of style. He now owns more farmland than my entire Native American nation. Okay, here is land is power, land is wealth, and more importantly, land is about race and class. So to address this, the US has about 2 million 
farms and the average farm is about 444 acres. They are mostly family run farms. So that means like father with his son and wife farms their land. And I don't think that these operations, when you look, uh, for example, on Laura farms or the millennial farmer or call the corn star that they really like express power, wealth and race and class through their ownership of farmland. So I feel like this statement is a little bit off. Then Bill Gates has never been a farmer. Okay. Uh, the third richest man on the planet doesn't have a green thumb. Again, okay. Nor does he put in the back-breaking labor humble people do to grow our food and who get far less praise for it. Um, well, so to address this, Bill Gates didn't grow up with a silver spoon up his ass. And to get to the level where he is now, he worked for 10 years straight. He didn't take vacations, he didn't take weekends off, he was just closed in his cubicle coding and coding away for 10 years straight to build Microsoft. I know that this is a different kind of essential labor, but the hours that farmers put in to grow the crops and what Bill Gates put in to grow Microsoft are very, very comparable. So he really put in backbreaking labor to get where he is now. And of course, <laughs> this article is obviously biased, but I am also not that objective. Like I try to be objective, but I really love billionaires, like the self-made billionaires, because they achieved something in their life. And I feel like every person, every individual should strive to achieve something great in the time that he was given. And I feel like self-made billionaires really took this challenge head on. And I want to achieve something of the level of Microsoft in the agricultural industry. So that's why I really love, well, not all of them, but some self-made billionaires. And that's also why I'm reacting to this article. Well, of course, it's interesting stuff and it's about farming, but also it's about Bill Gates. Back to the topic. And when you look at Bill Gates, when you look at him, honestly, doesn't he seem from his appearance like a humble guy? We can compare him, for example, to rappers, which aren't nowhere near his level. This guy doesn't seem like a compare. Who do you think, honestly, is more humble? The answer is obvious. Anyways, yeah, that kind of hard work isn't what made him rich, but another kind of really hard work is what made him rich. Then we have in total Gates owns approximately 242,000 acres of farmland with assets totaling more than $690 million. And he is enraged comparing it to his tribe. The United States is defined by the excess of its ruling class, but why do a handful of people own so much land? Well, to address this, obviously he sees it as something bad, but let's make this one clear. If the land wasn't for sale, then he couldn't buy it. And also this is nothing bad because Lots of farmers, and if you are a farmer, you know how it goes, like the business isn't as much profitable. And for example, if a farmer doesn't have children and wanna retire from the farm, then he needs to somehow get money to retire. And if all of his money is tied up in the land, what's he gonna do? He obviously is gonna sell the land and someone who has the means like Bill Gates is gonna buy it. So Bill Gates will essentially help this farmer retire, take the liability or liability of the farmland from him, from the retired farmer and continue to farm this land so that we can have food on our table even though that the previous owner has retired. And with the current prices of land, some farmers are just happy that they can lease some land from even Bill Gates because they can't yet afford to buy their own land. So when prices of land are this high, Bill Gates buys this farmland essentially for him 
but he leases it to this small farmer so that he can continue farming so that the food supply isn't broken. Then we have this unclear part essentially. Gun and a whip. Yeah, whatever. Uh huh. And then here is this interesting part the world's richest 1% amid double the carbon of the poorest. 50% essentially like logically there is no way that Bill Gates farts so much or something that he produces twice the amount of carbon as the poorest 50% so this number could be true but the main cause is that Bill Gates has some or these world's richest 1% have some holdings like their companies, their land and stuff and these companies while operating emit carbon or, and other emissions. And then this study takes the carbon emissions emitted by these companies and like essentially connected to these 1% of the richest. I don't think that's the right way to go about things because if these companies didn't exist like Microsoft or Google or Facebook or Nike, then there wouldn't be any jobs. So essentially, this study bashes the world's richest 1% for creating jobs for maybe even the poorest 50%, because when one of the poorest 50% in, I don't know, China or somewhere makes Nike shoes, it doesn't connect the emissions created by making this shoe to this minimum wage worker. I don't know how much they get paid. At least that's what I think, that they go and connect these emissions created by making this shoe to Phil Knight, who is the founder of Nike. And that's how you end up with a number like this, that the world's richest 1% and a double the carbon of the poorest 50%, while they are essentially providing jobs for the whole human population. This article isn't about farming anymore, but this is clearly populism or something. And here uh, the outro says that that's why land still managed by indigenous people worldwide protect and sustain 80% of the world's biodiversity practices anathema to industrial agriculture. This number, this 80%, is questionable but could be true. I didn't do research on that. But here the author has a point. I'm also not very happy about industrial agriculture. The way it's done now, like soil erosion and stuff, I would much rather have things grown in indoor farms and through regenerative farming. But to sum it up, I don't think there is anything bad about Bill Gates owning that much farmland. As I already said, if it wasn't for sale, he couldn't buy it, obviously. Another thing, through buying it, he can actually help farmers continue farming or help them retire and stuff. And to close this off, nothing is black and white and extreme ideas are almost always wrong. Which is a quote by another billionaire called Charlie Munger.